Right guys, so welcome back to another video on the channel, JSTAR15 here. Now today we're going to be talking about the new trailer that dropped for Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. And I'm going to be breaking it down and talking about different sections that I thought were interesting. And we're also going to be talking about what this means for the Sun and Moon anime. So without further ado, let's just jump into it. So the trailer starts off by saying, we're introducing Team Rainbow Rocket. And we get this picture, it says, you are challenged by Team Rainbow Rocket Giovanni. Now, what I want to point out is the fact that he only has five Pokemon. Now, whether this is like earlier in the game and he only has five, or we're actually just going to get five Pokemon for him and that's it. Or maybe the sixth slot is actually going to be the legendary. Now that we actually know that all the bosses are going to use legendary Pokemon. So, I just wanted to point that out. Also, it says you are challenged by Team Rainbow Rocket Giovanni. Now, usually it would have said Team Rocket Boss or Team Rocket Admin. But the fact that it says Giovanni, I thought that was a bit interesting, so just going to point that out there. So yeah, Team Rainbow Rocket. I don't know what the difference is between Rainbow Rocket and Normal Rocket. I'm guessing it's just Rainbow version, but I'm not actually quite sure. So if any of you do know, let me know in the comments. Moving on a little bit more, we got the Team Rocket HQ, I'm guessing it is, where it says Giovanni Strikes Back. Now I'm guessing this is like a pun or a play on words where Giovanni Strikes Back, well... The first Pokemon movie was Mewtwo Strikes Back, and obviously Giovanni made Mewtwo. So I'm guessing that was a little bit of a pun. If it's not, then... Well, I'm guessing it is. I'm guessing it is. But yeah, I don't know when this is actually in the game. I believe the Japanese trailer showed that our Pokemon was about level 70. So I'm guessing it's going to be after the Alola League and everything like that. It's going to be post-game, which is a bit unfortunate. I would like to see that introduced in the storyline. But, you know, at least we're going to get Giovanni and Team Rocket back. Then we got like a little promotional poster for it and we're going to be talking about this a bit later. Here we can see basically all the bad guys in the background as well as the main character with all the different Pokemon. You've know, you got Dusk Lycan Rock there, you've got Alolan Nightails, Alolan Raichu, Sophocles hiding under Incineroar. We've also got Wick and Guzma on the side so it looks like they're going to be joining our team. Moving on in the trailer we got Giovanni and Mewtwo. So this confirmed that the bosses will be battling with their legendary Pokemon. So Giovanni will fight with Mewtwo, Archie will fight with Kyogre, Maxi will fight with Groudon, Cyrus will fight with Giratina, I believe, although it could be Dialga or Palkia, I'm not quite sure. Dexys will fight with Kiram, although it could be Black Kiram or White Kiram, we don't know yet. And Lysander will fight with Zygarde. Then we get a picture of the new Team Rocket Grunts. I'll put a picture up of the old Grunts. And now you can see the difference. I don't think there is much of a difference. I think they've got a new belt. Uh, and they've got the new logo. But I think that's roughly about it. Moving on then we've got all the villain bosses. We've got Archie, Maxi, Cyrus, Getsis and Lysander. Now I want to point out that Archie and Maxi are in their Ruby, Sapphire and Emerald outfits. And not... Omega Ruby, Alpha Sapphire. So, going back to the old roots there. And also, Getsis is in Pokemon Black and White 1. And not his Black and White 2 outfit. So, you know, it's just a little throwback. And I like the fact that we're going to have all these to battle. Then moving on a bit more, we have the Battle Agency. Now, I'm guessing the Battle Agency is going to be a bit like the Battle Frontier in Emerald. We actually haven't had this since Pokemon Emerald. And that was, what was it, like seven years ago, maybe? Maybe a bit less than that. So that was quite a while ago. I absolutely loved it. I had Pokemon Emerald on the Nintendo DS. And I absolutely loved it. You basically, you go in and you can rent a Pokemon. So Pokemon that you wouldn't usually use. So we can see basically, you borrow Thunderous. And I believe there is an Alolan Zector and a Bishop that you can't quite see at the bottom there. But again, you can rent out Pokemon and battle with them. You also have a battle powerful characters and earn rare items. You can see Sophocles. Or Sophocles there with a Vicar Vault or Viker Vault. Uh, so I'm guessing he's going to be one of the captains that you get to face. I'm guessing he's the, the powerful captain, you know, the powerful character. But we'll have to see what type of other characters will be there. Whether it'll be other trial captains or even gym leaders from other regions might be coming back. We don't know yet. I'm guessing it'll be the trial captains. Maybe the Elite Four might be in there at some point. We'll just have to see. Moving a little bit on and we've got Search Alola for Totem Stickers. Now I'm guessing these stickers are going to be the new version of Zygarde Cells. We can see our character going up to 
the lab. I can't remember what the lab's called, but it's where Colorus is outside in Sun and Moon. I know that. And I think the fossil area is like over behind the character. But yeah, she's going to be picking up the sticker there. I don't know if they're going to be in the same place as the Zygarde cells. Be nice to see that so you know where at least few of them are. But it doesn't look like they're going to blend in that much. They do stand out quite a bit. If you collect the stickers, you can trade them in for totem-sized Pokemon. What we know of so far, there is going to be a Gumshoes, a Lurantis, and a Salazzle. Lurantis is going to be in Pokemon Ultra Sun, and Salazzle going to be in Ultra Mood. I'm guessing we're going to get a Mimikyu, we're going to get a Vikavolt, uh, and so on like that. I'm trying to think, a Wishy Washy maybe? Uh, we'll just have to see, but yeah, you know, the models were already in the game. It'll be nice to see, you know, the differences between the regular size and the uh, totem size. I believe the totem size is about three times the size of the normal Pokemon. So, yeah, it'll be quite fun going up against a random trainer and just having this giant gumshoes just staring on their little one. That'll be quite funny indeed. We also got some more information on different Pokemon will be appearing via the island scan. I didn't really use the island scan. I never really got my head around it and how it works and everything. But what we know so far, we're going to get Charmander, Grovile and Greninja. I'm guessing all of the starters will be there, obviously, apart from the Alola starters. Now we have the bit that everyone has been waiting for. And the bit that I was most excited for, all the legendaries got announced for Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. What we know so far is that... In the Ultra Wormhole or Ultra Space, we'll be going along in Solgaleon, Lunala, and we get to basically pair off into a different portal, and I think that's where we'll be defeating the legendaries. So I'm just going to be going through some of the legend. In fact, we're going to be going through all of the legendaries that you can catch, so here we go. So legendaries that you will be able to capture and battle will include the following. Mewtwo, Moltres, Zapdos, Articuno, Ho-Oh, Lugia, Entei, Suicune, Raikou, Groudon, Kyogre, Rayquaza, Latios, Latias, Regice, Regirock, Registeel, Dialga, Palkia, Uxie, Mesprit, Azelf, Regigigas, Cresselia, Heatran, Giratina, Reshiram, Zekron, Kiron, Cobalion, Terrakion, Verizion, Thunderous, Tornadus, Landorus, Xerneas, Uveltal, and Zygarde. <sighs> So it seems like not all of these legendaries will be able to capture straight away. You will need to do a few items or three different things before that. So in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, in order to get some legendaries, you needed the two before it. So, for example, to get Giratina, you needed Dialga and Palkia in your party. Now, this is where the annoying thing comes in. Because there isn't just D Giratina that needs this. In order to get Giratina, you will need Dialga and Palkia to appear. In order to get Suicune, you need Raikou and Entei. In order to get Rayquaza, you need Groudon and Kyogre. In order to get Kiram, you need Reshiram and Zekrom. And in order to get Landorus, you will need Tornadus and Thunderous. Now, the annoying thing with this is... Not all of these legendaries will be available in your game. So in Ultra Sun, you can get Ho-Oh, Raikou, Groudon, Latios, Dialga, Heatran, Reshiram, Tornadus, and Xerneas. Well, in Ultra Moon, you'll be able to get Lugia, Entei, Kyogre, Latias, Palkia, Regigigas, Zekrom, Thunderous, and Yveltal. Now, this means that you will need to buy both copies in the game if you want to collect all the legendaries. I mean, they did it in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. I wasn't really a fan of it because I like to capture all legendaries without having to spend an extra, you know, £30 or $50 or so on like that just to get them all. So that will be a bit annoying indeed. Now, it seems like if you do have both copies of the game or you've traded your Pokemon to the thing and you're able to get all the third special Pokemon, it does seem some of them are going to be powered up. For example, Zygarde here looks like he's going to be at the 100% form. Now, whether this means you're going to be able to get the 10% form, because we did see the 50% form, so whether it means you do get the 10% form, we'll have to see about that. Then we have Mega Mewtwo X and Mega Mewtwo Y. I'm guessing this is going to be a uh, games version, so I'm guessing the X is going to be Ultra Sun and the Y is going to be Ultra Moon, just going off where they're located on the screen. Then we have a Mega Ray Quaze, I'm guessing you'll need... Primal Kyogre and Primal Groudon, or normal Groudon and normal Kyogre for this. Next we have Giratina in its origin form. Now Giratina has two forms, the origin form, and then the... Don't know what the other form's called, but it's the one where he goes on the land. Uh, this is from the Reverse Worlds. Then we can see Black Kiram and White Kiram, Mega Latios and Mega Latias. 
thunderous, tornadoes, and landers. Now, these are all in their theorem forms instead of the incarnate forms. So, it'll be interesting to see how we do get them indeed. Then we have Primal Groudon and Primal Kyogre. Now, one thing that I'm interested to see is... Do these Pokemon come with items? For example, so in order to get Black Kiram and White Kiram, you need the DNA splices. So whether Kiram, to begin with, will come with the DNA splices, we'll have to see about that again. Whether, say, for example, Dialga and Palkia, whether they'll come with the Adamantium Orb and the Luscious Orb, or whether we'll have to travel to some black market guy who sells them to us, we'll just have to see about that. So here we've got a little overview of just some of the legendaries in here. One thing that I was a bit upset at is there is no... Mythical Pokemon, it just seems to be the box legendaries and then extras, for example, the Lake Trio, the uh, Beast Trio, and Landorus, Thunderous, Tornado, so on like that. Yeah, I would have liked to see the mythical Pokemon, because there's quite a lot of mythical Pokemon that I don't have. For example, Hooper, you know, Volcanion's in there, Marshadow, you can get the moment, so it's going to be a bit annoying the fact that we can't get some of the rare ones. But yeah, I would have liked to see mythical Pokemon there. So now it's time to talk about the anime side of the video. Now, 60% of the time, the anime will follow the game's uh, story. For example, the bad guys are the same. Gym leaders, Elite Four, Champion, they're all the same. Uh, starter Pokemon, you know, so on and so forth like that. Different locations, for example, in Sun and Moon, Meli Meli Island, Akala Island, they're all the same. The Ether Fa Foundation or the Paradise. But if we have a look at this poster here that got announced, we can see that, so left to right, we have Getsis, Archie, Lysander, Giovanni, Cyrus, Maxi, and then we have Faber. Now, in Sun and Moon, Guzma and Lusamine were the bad guys in that, but Faber to be up there is suggesting that Lusamine might not be the bad guy that we think she was. Now, what does this mean for the anime? In the Japanese version of the anime, Lusamine has not long been introduced into the arc and she seems a lot more friendly towards everybody and Lily, like, she cares about Lily. She wants to find out what Lily does at school, you know, how she's getting on, how she's making friends, you know, asking her all different questions. How's Chiron or Alolan Vulpix doing? You know, just being like a nice mother. And when Ditto broke free in that episode, Lucifine did hurry down to say, you know, Lily, are you okay? She was very, very caring. Although this could be, you know, a whole different side of Lucifine that we haven't seen before. She might be just playing us and then go evil. But I believe an episode that's coming out in the future is Faber's Counter-Attack. Now, this is just that Faber could be the bad guy in the anime and in the games. Now, if I'm right in thinking, this Team Rocket or Team Rainbow Rocket arc is going to occur after the Alola League, which means in the anime, it could occur after the Alola League as well. Obviously, we've got about a year before we'll even see that happen. It's going to be quite annoying indeed. But if this is true, and this does go to the anime, Ash has fought all of the bad guys you see at the top. So whether they're going to make an appearance or not, it'll be very interesting to see. But I mean, get this, Ash fought him in Season 16, and episode 121 to 122, where Team Plasma and gets his try and revive Reshiram and try and take control of Pikachu. Ash and Pikachu have a strong bond, so therefore it doesn't work. And Ash basically beats Getsis along with N. So it'd be interesting to see if he's going to come back into it. Then in season 8, episode 97 and 98, Ash took on Archie and Maxi. Archie and Maxi both wanted to revive. Revive Groudon and Kyogre with the special orbs. And by some coincidence, Ash and his friends happen to end up on Team Magma's submarine, stealing the red orb and Pikachu absorbing it. So therefore, Archie and Max are trying to take on Pikachu, trying to get that orb back. But obviously, Ash and Pikachu are just overpowered and absolutely beat Archie and Maxi. Then in Season 19, Ash took on Lysander. In episode 132 to 136, Lysander was trying to take control of Zygarde, took over Prism Tower and trying to basically end all human life apart from a select special few. Uh, obviously, Ash and Pikachu and Ash and Ash Greninja were overpowered again and managed to beat Lysander. Then in season 12, Ash took on Cyrus and Team Galactic. From this episode 150 to 152, Cyrus was trying to bring Dialga and Palkia into the world from their dimension, as well as making Uxia, Azelf, and Mesprit suffer. So it's up to Ash, Brock, and Dawn to try and save them. Obviously, Ash and Pikachu and Legendary Lake Trio are overpowered and managed to beat Cyrus. Then Giovanni. Giovanni has popped up 
quite, I think in every single season, there is a sneak peek of Giovanni somewhere in there. But the main place where Ash took him on was in season 15 from episode 96 to 97. Now, Giovanni had captured Meloetta and was trying to revive Landris, Thunderous and Tornadus using the reverse glass or the reverse mirror. I'm not quite sure what that's called. And trying to destroy all of Unova and take it over. However, Ash and Pikachu again once more are overpowered and managed to beat Giovanni along with Team Rocket. And Dr. Zayda, I think he's called or something like that. So it'll be interesting to see all of these, if they do come back into it, what their reaction will be to Ash. Like, will they remember him? Will they not? Will Ash remember them? Will he not? It'll be nice to see. But yeah, I think this is where we're going to end this video off. I don't know how long it is. I've been recording for about 34 minutes, but that's probably going to go down quite a bit. You know, when you struggle to pronounce three legendary Pokemon in a row, you kind of get stressed out and need to take a break. But yeah, if you do enjoy this video, please do hit that thumbs up button. Super excited for Ultra Sun and Moon and what the impacts will be on the anime. Also, before I forget, I was thinking of doing some reviews on the Pokemon Sun and Moon anime, but I didn't really know where there was a gap for me to step into it. And since I made a video on Brock and Mr. Returning to Anime, I thought, you know what? It'll be a good time to review. I'll probably do the two episodes that they're in. If you guys like it, I'll carry it on. If not, then, you know, whatever. I might do special episodes. I might stop doing them altogether. Be yeah, a comment down below in the comment section if you want to ask any questions or if you got any ideas about what the anime is going to lead towards, whether the big bad guys are going to be back in the anime. Or let me know what version of Ultra Sun or Ultra Moon you are going to be getting. Be interested to see how many legendaries you'll be able to catch in that. And finally, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. But yeah, thank you once more for watching. I'll see you in the next one.